So guys, in this video we're going to take a look at this Vauxhall Insignia trade repair job that we did. Now, the wing itself um, had, a, had been creased in on the corner where it's been primed and it just caught the bumper edge. So we're just going to do a quick flick in on this wing and then do a little bit of a blow in on the front bumper just to make it a nice quick easy job and obviously being a trade job it's not something that you want to spend a lot of time. So if I talk you through what I'm doing first thing I'm doing is getting some panel wipe and giving this wing and everything a good scrub down now I always panel wipe them before I mask them but I always panel wipe them again before I paint them just to make sure they are extra clean and just to make sure that anything from when I've been masking like the oil or anything off your hands doesn't obviously transfer onto the car body and the car paintwork um, so this second panel wipe that I'm doing here is just a little bit of an extra just in case panel wipe really just to make sure especially with it being a trade car that there's whether the tyres have been shined up with some silicon and stuff like that but none of that tyre shine or anything's on the panel and it's free from oil and grease before we start the job. Now secondly, now we've made sure this panel is all nice and clean, we're just going to put a little bit of a false edge mask down this bumper edge because obviously we don't want to get a hard edge there um, and have any trouble obviously polishing out any blends afterwards. So we're just going to do a little folded tape trick straight down the edge of this bumper here, make sure it goes top to bottom so we can cover that little edge and then obviously it's just got a little bit of an air gap just to blow in so we can give that nice little false edge on there and then one of the most important things for me personally and a lot of you guys have seen some of the work I've been doing recently and I've had a lot of comments on really how do you get a job that clean now I never used to um, think that you could get jobs this clean to be honest with you um, but it is all about the preparation and the effort that you put in on the car making sure your car's clean obviously your car's well sheeted your boots working well for you and also the tack rag now I'd say your tack rag's probably one of the most underutilized piece of kits that you've got not only do I obviously you saw me there tack rag the sheet in around this area just to make sure that no dust or anything settled right around the area that we're going to paint because obviously when we get going on this and with the clear coat and we're putting two bar of pressure any dust that's anywhere near this car can move around so for me airlining around this front end on the floor to make sure there's no settled dust on the floor and going over the wing once or twice and that bit of masking on your poly or your paper around the area just to make sure that there's no lying dirt or anything there and obviously as you will see during this actual paint job a lot of the time I will tack all the blend areas to make sure they keep nice and clean and free from overspray and also tack over the repaired area when I dried that down a few times just to make sure that as we're going along anything that's landing on this car is getting taken off in between coats. Now to start off with I'm just going to start blowing in around these little fiddly edges to make sure we've got the coverage on these edges. I think that's another thing sometimes they tend to go too much for the repair and little edges like this can sometimes get missed quite easily um, and we've all I'm sure we've, you know everyone who paints who watches the channel has all had that little bumper edge or something that's missed with a bit of colour or a bit of clear coat and it can be quite frustrating and you have to obviously then touch it up and mess about with it so I always find it best to get those panel gaps and those panel edges first just to make sure that we're getting the coverage on them. Now we are using solvent based coat for this job I think I've only got around about 150-200 mil in here and in between each coat I'm just going to give it a quick flick um, with the air over it just to make sure it's drying down nicely now obviously in this booth um, we're running at around about 25 to 26 degrees so it doesn't take a lot of flashing off but obviously with me wanting to go over this with the tack rag and things like that what I don't want is for one bit of that just not quite to be off enough that I could run the tack rag over it and risk damaging the paint surface or obviously scratching the metallic or anything and then having to wet flat that out and mess about like that so I do like in between the coats just to give it a nice little bit of a dry down see where the colours up to see how the panels looking see how the repair and everything's looking and then as I said before make sure this blend section of the panel where any overspray is going to land from obviously painting this repair make sure that's nice and clean and in between tack rag around the areas right again on the front bumper where we're doing the blends and once that area is dry tack rag over that area a bit as well and as you can probably see the tack rag there from this just that first coat um, and that initial spray there there's already overspray getting on the panel 
and any of that overspray creates dust any of that dust then is going to show up in your paintwork so I can't emphasize enough if you are going for all that absolutely killer clean paint jobs you really do need to go OTT really with your tat rag um, I have to say that some people that I know say that I am rather OCD as far as tat ragging a car goes but there is no better tool really while you're spraying apart from your gun obviously and yourself than your tat rag um, the more you tat rag it um, and you keep it clean and nice during your paint job the better your final job's going to come out and even once I've put these coats of base down and I've finished my blends and everything when I go out of the booth and I mix up my clear coat I come back in with my fresh gun I'll do exactly the same again I'll set my gun to two bar um, the same as I'm going to paint it and I'll give the area a good tack round including where we have painted to make sure that everything's clean and nice so one thing that I do do quite a bit in between coats is use the actual air from the spray gun itself just to dry that base coat down and just to speed up the process now the only thing that I really cut out in this video in this whole job is just that tiny little bit of probably about 60 seconds of blowing down the car because obviously you guys don't really want to see me standing there waving a bit of air out the spray gun at a car for a minute uh, it'd be a little bit boring for you guys to watch and it really doesn't matter if you're using salt base coat or water base coat uh, water based base coat sorry um, you can use the same technique for either um, just that air on your gun when you're doing a small little repair like this you don't really need the blowers in your booth um, them little crappy ones that you get on stands or quads um, you can just if you're doing a small job like this as long as you've got a nice amount of heat in there you've got a good bit of airflow from your booth and just use that air from your actual spray gun then water base will dry down just fine and it's not an issue whatsoever it won't take you you know much longer than sticking a quad in front of it and messing around turning it on and off in between and obviously risking having the dirty air suck through the quad and then put over your panel as well it's it's all relative to getting that nice clean job um, the other thing is obviously making sure that you've got good quality airlines making sure your guns are clean a good water trap and oil trap on your airline um, again is essential to making sure your jobs are clean because you don't want you know crap coming down your airlines and getting into your paintwork and obviously getting in your fresh paint it's just you know there's a lot of things that go into making that really perfect clean paint job but it you know and it does take a lot of time and a lot of effort to actually nail it but once you do nail it you'll really surprise yourself at just how clean you can get a car gun finish and also obviously dirt wise you know a job like this you might nip two or three little bits out of it polish those blends and away you go and it's happy days but as in anything in this job it does take a hell of a lot of practice um, to get used to the best prepping methods and obviously the best place that your booth's clean for me I found that right in front of these filters down at the front here is the cleanest section of the booth um, I find if I put stuff at the back I tend to get a bit more crap in them so say if I was doing like a big job like I'm doing tomorrow on a Citroen C1 which I'll film and I'll put up um, I'll probably put the bumper behind the car and that'll end up with a bit more crap in it but I'll keep the car towards the front because the car's got the majority of the paintwork so any dust or anything that does come in um, the majority of it's going to miss the car um, and obviously a bumper's a lot easier to polish up than what the rest of the whole car is so back to this job in hand at this shop we mainly use two clear coats we use the Max Mayer 0200 which I'm mixing here and we use the Max Mayer 0300 now the 0300 the HS we normally use that mostly for the private work and the higher end stuff um, obviously the bigger paying jobs and the 0200 we use for the all the trade work and the little quick bumper blowings and stuff like that because although it says it's an HS personally it's the thickness of an MS it's got the build of an MS so you know whatever the tin is branded up as you know I'll let Max Mayer worry about that it's not my problem um, but I do find it's easier for these little jobs and obviously these little quick trade jobs it's that little bit easier and that little bit cheaper um, so it's something that you know you can use two different clear coats to keep the costs down on jobs um, and for us we use the 0200 it's still a very good quality clear coat uh, it bakes nice it polishes up nice um, and it's you know quick and easy mix two to one uh, clear coat to hardener ratio and then I just put a splash of about 5% thinners in there just to help it flow out because I'm just going to, with this being a trade job, I don't want to spend a lot of time flat polishing it I just want to get this on really smooth, really nice um, 
with obviously the least amount of crap in it I can. So I can just give it a quick nib and polish and we can get it out the door and get the next job in the booth. Because in a shop like this, obviously throughput is um, one of the main priorities. Getting jobs in, getting jobs out, the cleaner you're getting them, the less time the lads need to spend flat polishing them. So obviously you can get jobs in and out quicker. Now you'll notice that I have prepped up two guns here. I've got the GTI Pro Light with a 1.2 and a T110 air cap, which is my preferred for clear coat, whether it be MS or HS. And then I've just got the little Sauta Mini Jet here, which I've just put a little bit of fast thinners in, which I'm going to use for a bit, a little bit of fade out thinners on that clear blend on that front bumper. And I'm going to take both of them in the booth now, so that I've got no change over times. It just saves me a bit of a messing about and coming in and out because the least amount of times. I need to come in and out of this booth during this job obviously that will limit the amount of crap that can be sucked into the booth as well so I'll take both guns in now they're both prepped and ready and then I'm ready to do the actual clear coat section on this job and the other thing guys um, obviously we have changed up the style of the videos a bit obviously we are painting this new booth and in this new shop let me know what you think of the video guys um, and, the, and the sort of new style that we're trying out um, and let me know what you think and your thoughts on stuff and if there's anything extra that you'd like to see us include or there's anything you'd like us to take out obviously you know the watchability for you guys as well as the information that we put into the videos is obviously paramount because we don't want you getting bored halfway through and then switching off you know we want to keep it going so that you guys are entertained and informed all the way through right so for the clear coat section, like I said, I'm using the Devilvis GTI Pro Light with a 110 air cap. It's in a 1.2mm setup rather than a 1.3. Um, we have got a 1.3 setup for it, but I have actually found that this 1.2 setup is really nice. You can get a really nice, fine, wet coat of clear down with it, and you can pick and choose your finish a little bit more. Um, because you're not putting so much of a build on, it's easier to get that factory finish for jobs like this. And also, when you get up to the jobs that you want, it can be really a lot flatter and um, you can just turn the fluid up a little bit and obviously with it being a 1.2 it atomizes really nice and you can get that really nice flat finish on it now gun settings wise I've got this at two bar the same as usual I've got the fan about three quarters open um, which I find gives the best atomization with these um, rather than using a, a full on fan um, and it just suits my spray style that a little bit better and I've got it at the moment uh, only around about one and a half turns out um, and again that is so I can load this panel up to the amount of clear coat that I need obviously on this we want a, we're not we don't want to try and go for a glassy finish and really leather this clear coat on we want this to be a really nice factory looking finish so putting it at one and a half turns out I can gauge using my speed and my distance and obviously you know my overlap etc just how much clear coat I'm putting on and also gauge the finish and just add or you know like here I can just add to that finish that little bit and um, if I think it's a little bit too dry for what the Vauxhall is from factory or I can hammer a bit more on and go a bit slower and um, just to wet it up that little bit you know it's all about your gun and how you spray not only your distance your air pressure you know your viscosity of your paint everything comes into account when you're going for that actual final finish and I find that with my clear coat mixed the way that I've got it with this spray gun and this setup I can pretty much go for any factory finish that I want and any factory finish that I'm looking to match just by altering my actual spraying style on the job itself and as I said before in the video we haven't actually left much out of this all I've left really is that 60 seconds of blowing it down with the gun um, on the actual base coat side of things and we're only at sort of the 14-15 minute mark and this job is already on its second coat of clear and pretty much finished so these little trade jobs can be done quite quickly and quite efficiently um, you can get them in the booth, knock them out um, get it baked off nice and quick um, and then get the next one in and get cracking on that so finish wise as you can see I've got this bang on factory um, I think there's like two or three tiny little nibs in this panel so it's nothing that I'm going to worry about it's just going to be very, once it's been baked off, it's going to be a really quick nib with a bit of 2000 wet flat, quick spot polish on there, and obviously a quick little nib and polish on these two blends at the front. Now, I've got the little Sarta Mini Jet here, which I'm using, just a little bit of fast thinners in there. You can use fast thinners, you don't um, particularly need to use fade out thinners, although fade out thinners, I will say, does work that little bit better, obviously, because it's properly designed for the job. Um, 
And all we're going to do is just where those two little clear blends are, we're going to remove our false edge. And then we're going to just gently blow a little bit of this thinners over just to melt new and old paint together that little bit better. And also to make this little blend um, that much easier to polish into the existing paintwork. So I'm going to leave you here for this video guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I know you've enjoyed the information. As I said, don't forget to drop us some comments. Um, let us know what you think of the new video style and obviously the work that we're doing here. And I'll see you again shortly for the next video. Thanks for watching guys.